welcome back to Country Conversations. My name is Joey, and as always, I'm joined by... Hey man, it's Chris here tonight. What's going on tonight, Joey? Man, not a whole lot. We've got a uh, special guest on tonight that we're super stoked to introduce to you guys that are listening in. We have a Nashville recording artist, Walker Montgomery, join us. How you doing, Walker? Man, I'm doing well. Doing doing well. Appreciate y'all having me on. Yeah, man. We appreciate you taking the time to join us. But uh, no, man, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to. We're uh, heading up to West Virginia now, so I, I got some free time. That's awesome, man. What's going on in West Virginia? Man, so we got, we're out on the road with uh, Parker McCollum uh, this weekend. So we got one show in Charleston, West Virginia, and uh, that'll be tomorrow night. And then on Friday, we, uh, we, have, a, we have a show in Roanoke, Virginia with, with Parker. Uh, so that'll be a good one, too. Then I got to fly to Hobart, Indiana, and we're doing a fair with Cole Swindell. So we got a, a jam-packed weekend, but that's the way we like it. That's right, man. That's, that's awesome. Right, man. I was looking at your touring schedule earlier. It looks like you're going to be burning it up this summer. It looks like you were going to be Ooh. at almost every festival known to man this summer. <laughs> man, I'll tell you what. I mean, prop, props, to, props to my booking agent. He's, he's done a great job of get, getting us out there and, and uh, you know, just trying to make make one fan at a time. But, yeah, man, we, we're burning up the blacktop, and and uh, we couldn't be more happy about it. Like I said, that, that's the way we like it. It's, it's much better than uh, – than sitting at home and especially after 2020 and all that stuff we need to i need to get my butt on the road and on the treadmill <laughs> yeah. too but, oh, i feel uh, you on that man yeah we hear we hear that man <laughs> hey, Amen. that's that's for sure yeah um I, we were talking off air right before you came on but i'm actually from charleston and i have tickets yeah. to the show tomorrow night and uh the venue i don't know it probably holds four thousand, and uh i mean Everybody here in town is super pumped for the show tomorrow night. So um, good, it's, it's going to well, be a good I'll tell one. you what, man. I mean, you're, if, if you don't come, you're going to miss something special. Parker puts on one hell of a show, man. And he's he's a great dude. And we got the same manager. So we've, we've been doing some shows with him uh, every now and then. And every time we go out, it, he's super gracious. And he's a great dude. Like I said, a hell of a, a, hell of a performer and, uh, and just a, a really stand-up guy. That's cool, man. So you've you've done you've done some shows with him before. Yeah, man, we've done a handful of shows with him before. Sometimes I'll go out acoustic before him. Sometimes I'll bring the bring the whole band. But tomorrow, this whole weekend is going to be acoustic. So, uh, but no, man, he, he's uh, he's 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 him and his whole camp are awesome. That leads to an interesting question. I've always uh, I know Joey agrees with this, but anytime that we see an artist acoustically. If they got, if they have it, if they got the chops to do it, I feel like that you always connect with the audience a little bit better uh, that way. I mean, what's yeah, your experience uh, going out and playing acoustic as opposed to full band? Yeah, you know, in some cases, I would definitely agree with that. Uh, it's it, every crowd's different, obviously, but I do love doing acoustic stuff. It's fun, like you said. It's 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 kind of more you can connect, and it's more intimate, and and. Uh, you know, things just things happen during acoustic shows that don't really happen during live band shows. Like I think it was the last time we were out with Parker Man, and we were uh, we were in Jacksonville, Florida, and my mom called me when I was on the stage, and <laughs> it was, and I just answered it. I I answered the phone, and and the crowd the crowd helped me along, but it, it was funny. But that's that's the kind of stuff that you can't really pull off during during a live band show. You know, it's. It uh, but no, the acoustic. There's there's pros and cons to to each one, but I do love doing some acoustic stuff. Yeah, man, absolutely, absolutely. for sure. Well, we know that you're on the road, you know, doing shows with Parker and Cole Swindell and everything like that here. But to those that know you and that are fans of yours, it's no surprise that you grew up surrounded by music. You know, with your father being John Michael Montgomery and Uncle Eddie Montgomery yeah. of Montgomery Gentry and everything. But what ultimately led you to choosing the path of music as a career? It took a while to be honest with you, man. It, it, uh, of course, I grew up on the road, on buses every other weekend and stuff like that. So I kind of knew, I knew what the tour life was, was all about and stuff. But we lived in Kentucky. So I didn't really know what kind of Nashville was all about and all that stuff until really I moved down there. And I mean, you know, hell, I still ain't got it all figured out, but it did, t- it did take a while to, uh, to get me into music because I was, my parents surrounded me with sports and, you know, acting or choir or stuff like that. And before that sports, sports was king in my life. I was playing football and basketball and, 
and uh but until high school you know came around i i choir was really the only kind of music that i ever really did and uh it kind of it kind of took me look at myself you know i'm like six two mm-hmm. you know and, and i kind of took myself looking at myself in the mirror saying hey you are not going to the nba or <laughs> you are not going to get red stone a football and uh so at once i once i kind of had that talk with myself i pursued the music and and it didn't take long for me to kind of figure out that if i if i'm on stage with a guitar the girls are kind of dig that more than than uh you know some sweaty some sweaty jock <laughs> playing football or something <laughs> like that so i did i did a, my first show and all you know all these girls from the high school came stuff like that and i was like all right i can see myself doing this so that Heck was yeah. i was about 16 at that point so it uh no man but it it, it took a while to get there that's awesome that's cool, man, man. You, you grew up in nicholasville kentucky is that right yep yep nicholasville so it's 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 a suburb of lexington where the university of kentucky is it's 25 minutes south but uh oh, okay. but yeah man Nich- yeah, nicholasville yeah, well. home how long have you been in Nashville? When did you make the move? I moved down. I went to college for a glorious nine weeks, and uh, <laughs> at the university at the University of Kentucky. And you know, me, I mean, music just had my heart at that point, man. And 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 I just knew my I knew that college wasn't you know what I really wanted to do. And during weeks, the week and the weekend, I was always playing little restaurant bars and honky tonks around central Kentucky. So I just kind of decided to bite the bullet and, and, uh, and move on down there. And not to mention my grades weren't really where I wanted them to be if I was in college, cause I was playing all the time and I might've been drinking beer on the side. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, well. When do you, when do you think that was like 20, 2016? Oh uh, yeah. I'd, I'd like... say that that was about, that was about 20, 27 well actually no i see i graduated high school in 2017 so that was, oh, okay. that was 2018 2019 cool oh that's cool yeah that's man cool. by that point was your family all in as far as supporting you were they or were they or were they kind of giving you a warning to to jump in <laughs> well I, I think that they kind of knew that it was coming to be honest with you but it was really see my dad he never got a chance to go to college because he was playing they they grew up with next to nothing damn near and and uh so he was playing honky tonks and stuff at when he was my age and so he always really wanted me to go to college and and uh and but once he kind of saw the writing on the wall i think that his hesitancy of of me leaving school subsided but mom was all in from from the start and he he was all in but like i said he wanted he did want me to go to college just because he never had the chance to and and everything like that but no they they, they've always been so supportive of me man whatever path that i wanted to take but uh the the music path they they definitely kind of knew it was coming that's cool man well man who would you say have been some of your biggest musical influences that have just influenced your style as an artist I'll tell you what, man. I've, I've been blessed because I've I've gotten to meet a lot of the folks that uh, that have really influenced me, and whether it's vocal wise or, or production wise and stuff. I'd say Tracy Lawrence is the number one up there, and we've done a handful of shows with him, and and uh, he's just he's just a great great guy. Loves Silver Patron tequila. Uh, and, but there, you know, I'd, I'd say him. And if I had to cho- choose a more recent guy, I'd, I'd probably go with Luke Bryan just cause that's, that's what we, and when I was in high school, that's what we listened to circled up well, you know, on the tailgates circled up trucks around bonfires and stuff like that. For so sure. that was, uh, I yeah, mean, absolutely. that was when he was, of course he's still on top of the world, but that was when he was first coming out and you know, all, all these just hit after hit after hit. But uh, I'd say I'd say Tracy Lawrence still still has the crown for me, for sure. Absolutely, it's hard, it's hard to beat Tracy. The the venue that you guys are playing at tomorrow night, uh, I saw Clay Walker and Tracy Lawrence with Randall King there about a month and a half ago, and oh yeah, that's one of the best shows I've ever seen. I mean, and you. I've seen Tracy ten times probably, and that that was hey. one of the best nights of country music that yeah. I have ever seen. 
Man, I'll tell you what, they still got it. They still got it. And, and they uh, do. you mentioned Randall yeah. King right there, man. I, I love what he's, I love what he's doing. I mean, his, he's just got, he's got it going on. Oh, dude, for sure. Yeah, we're, we're big fans of his as well, man. We got to meet him, what was that, earlier this year, and such a good dude. Yeah, yeah. As, as far as your influences go, it's you mentioned Luke Bryan. I know we're going to get into this a little bit later, but I know that Dallas Davidson has had a big impact on your career, and obviously he had a huge impact yep. on Luke's career too. So what's just kind of just jump in on that relationship, and I'm sure that's just been a really cool thing to have. It really has been, man. And when I first moved to town, uh, I was there for about a year, and I'd say that Dal- Dallas, you know, he was really the first one to, to – uh, take take a shot at me and 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 you know take a chance on on me and my career and so like you like you mentioned he's done damn near everything in the music business that there is to be done so just to have that wealth of knowledge that uh that he brings to the table and uh and and to go to you know be able to go to if something isn't going right or, or I need some advice for something. Uh, he's a, he's definitely a, a great asset to have and a great ally to have, uh, as a mentor. And, you know, he's got, he's got three kids, he's got a family and, and stuff and he's a great, great dad, great husband. But most of all, he's a, he's a spectacular boss and a great friend. That's awesome. Man. I remember, I mean, I'm, I know, I'm sure that I'm sure Dallas did stuff before Luke, but I just remember, you know, I've just always been that kid that as soon as he bought a CD, got out the liner notes to look at all the writers and the producers and stuff, yeah. and, you know, the, the peach pickers and, and Dallas and Rhett and those guys, that's just, you know, for the oh, last man. 15 years, they've just dominated Nashville. They, yeah, man. And Hey, the fact that they wanted to produce me, cause I got the whole peach pickers producing me. And, uh, just the fact that they wanted to do that, it's, it's, it's a real honor, but, when <laughs> when Dallas when Dallas called me, I'll never forget when Dallas called me and asked if uh, if I'd be all right if if all the peach pickers were, were producing me. I was just I was floored, man. And uh, it's just it was a it's been a really cool experience to just be able to hang out with them and pick their brain and and uh, and write songs with them. That's awesome, man. That's definitely. Well, you've talked a little bit about some of your influences on your music, but how would you describe your music to someone that's never listened to you before? It, dude, it's just down home, and that's and that's about the the best way that I can I can describe it when folks ask ask me that. It's it it makes you when I record a song, my main thing is I want it to be relatable, and I've got a lot of hometown songs, and you know some some of it might be redundant or whatever but it's just the way i feel and and uh and i think that a lot of people feel that way too just because i love where i'm from i love the way i was raised and i wouldn't trade any anything in my life for for the world so i think it it really uh you know it resonates in my songs just the way that i feel but i'd say it's just down home country music man yeah, I think that's a perfect description for sure from all the stuff I've listened to of yours. So that's awesome, man. Yeah, absolutely, man. Tell us, um, tell us a little bit about the about the latest the latest project, the EP Rust. Um, I, but we've Rust. I know Joey and I both have been burn, yeah. burning it up. But but tell us a little bit about the just the making of it, and you know, jump into a couple of the songs if you want to. Yeah, man. Well, hey, I, pre- I appreciate you listening to it. But Rust, I, I held on to that song for uh, for about two years when we went into the studio to cut uh some other stuff when i first signed with played again another artist actually had that uh song rust on hold so we couldn't we couldn't uh record it at the time but then he never ended up recording it so we went back into the studio and and uh and laid it down but so we we've been really really shopping that song for about two years, and it's just it's a really special song to me. But we uh, we you know some of the songs on there like she don't know and bad day to be a beer have already been out. But uh, we just wanted to get new songs to to everybody. So we had had some songs that we recorded, and some some of the songs that we recorded aren't on there, but we're going to release them soon. Uh, but no, it was just a really fun project to make, and and. It'd been too long. I think it almost been four years or something since I released a full EP. It doesn't. It doesn't feel like that. Like it's been that long, but it had. So to be able to get another EP under my belt and and uh, and just put out some new songs, it was really special. 
especially with rust and uh my hometown's fault uh on there oh, yeah, they're always one. fun yeah. they're always fun to play live and and uh of course we've been playing she don't know has done really well for me so it uh a lot of those songs have, have blessed me beyond words and uh, especially with she don't know but i'm excited to see what rust and my hometown's fault uh are going to be able to do and and uh just really excited. We've been playing them live and, and all that stuff, and we've we've been getting some some really good responses. So so uh, we're gonna we're going God willing, it's gonna it's gonna turn out well. That's cool, man. I mean, just on Rust, you've got Ashley Gorley and Nicole Galleon as co-writers. I mean, you mm-hmm. you could not get bigger and better songwriters on a song than the, than those two right there. No, nah, man, and, and I'll tell you what. I mean, I I really appreciate them trusting me with their songs. So that's. That's another cool thing that that having the peach pickers uh, on on my side, you know, that they can bring to the table. They can kind of, you know, some of the, like Ashley Gorley, he's a Kentucky boy. That if they're on the fence about letting me cut a song or something like that, they can they can kind of nudge it along. But the fact that folks like Ashley and Nicole and Brandon trust me with with songs that they've written, it's just uh, it's a really it it's almost it's almost surreal thinking about it but i it's it's an honor to cut cut songs written by such legendary folks well yeah and like you said i mean if they if they didn't have faith or trust in you they're big enough they can pretty much dictate who gets their songs at this point yep yep just a kind of offhand question because i'm just so curious i mean when when a song gets put on hold by another artist is that like exclusive and they have a certain amount of time to record it or how does that process usually work well Beyond in in a perfect world, they probably should have a certain time to record. You know, amount of time to record it because a lot of folks, and I don't think it happens as much now, but a lot of folks will put a song on hold for a year, or year and a half, or something like that. And that's not just really fair to the writer. Yeah. Uh, so it, there's there's no allotted time that is set. Like, hey, if you if you don't cut it within these amount of months then it's not on it's not on hold anymore but uh yeah but no and and most of the time there's most of the time there's there's no issue at all but but i'm sure that there's i haven't run into that issue because luckily we're you know pretty proactive when it comes to recording music and stuff like that but i'm sure that there has been (laughs) has been some some uh instances where where some uh some fights have gone on just from an artist holding on to a song too long without recording it Oh yeah, I mean you you know you hear the, you hear I mean not fights but you hear all the old stories of you know when you look back and see that Keith Whitley and Randy Travis recorded the same songs or you know yep. Garth jumped in and record, recorded a couple of George Strait songs and you know I'm sure yep. the, the world the world was probably different back then than it is now but it's just a uh, you know part of part of country music history. No, it's definitely it's definitely an interesting thing, especially you know Mark Chestnut releasing Friends in Low in Low Places first and then yep. Didn't really have success with it, and then Garth, Garth did it, and the rest is history. That's right, man. You know, it, it just depends on which uh, which uh, artist makes lightning strike with with a specific song. Yeah, no, you're you're 100 correct on that. Um, the Peach Pickers have they jumped in as a threesome like that and produced quite a bit? Because I mean, obviously, I know them. I know I know their own music, and I know obviously all the songs they've written, but I, is that a, yeah. is that a new thing for them or, or have they done that quite a bit? Well, they, they, they've produced things on their own or co-produced, uh, things individually, but, yeah. but, this, but I'm the first act that they've ever, you know, kind of combined forces and, uh, and, uh, just gotten together and, and produced as the piece pickers. So that it's something, it's something really cool, cool for me to, uh, to, and, it, and then again, it just goes back to you know the fact that they trust me with their songs and and uh, believe in me enough to go into the studio and stamp their name on on uh, on a project that we did together. It's a really special thing. But yeah, I'm the I'm the first act, and they've uh, they've all combined forces and produced together. I, I just imagine you in the recording booth and the three of them sitting there. That's got to be that's got to be a surreal experience. The first yeah. couple of times that well, you, I tell you, you did yeah, that. man, I tell you, you know, it's it, I mean, I'm comfortable around them now, but at the uh, at first it, it was kind of intimidating, man. I'm like, that gun boy, like, what's <laughs> like, is this is this is this real right now? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic. That's cool, man. 
Well, Walker, circling back around to the EP, I know you mentioned kind of what you're looking for to put out to, in your music as far as relatability and just being down home country music, but what is it that you hope your fans and maybe new listeners that discover your music take away from the project? My thing about any song or project that I, I try to put out and is, is, like I said, relatable. And, and if I can release a song that changes one person's mood or changes one person's day or, or whatever, or, touch, or touches them in a way that country music should, then I'm happy. And whatever song or project that I release, that is the ultimate goal. You know, it's, I love going out and performing in, in front of crowds and, and, and doing my thing up on stage and stuff. But if the songs aren't relatable, then nobody's going to show up. So if but if I release relatable songs and and stuff that that touches to the to the core, uh, people are gonna people are gonna show up. So that's the main goal. Whenever I go in to do a record or record a few songs or something like that, that's always what I have in mind. Hey man, that's yeah, awesome, man. Uh, whenever uh, one question, whenever you go into a studio and you have heard the demos and you've practice the songs acoustically and stuff and then you go into a studio to record the studio version do, do you feel like the music turns out kind of how you had it in your head or or does it just take you know different turns and sometimes it ends up being different than what you had imagined man most of the time it really does take on a life of its own and in the studio some magic can happen that just can't happen in a demo session or something like that yeah. and uh, a, a lot of a lot of the problems that you know, some artists run into and I've run into it is you hear a song that's a demo and you love the song so much when it's demoed up and then you go into the studio with these professional, just, just, I mean, talent, just ungodly talented musicians. And, you know, the, the song turns out a little bit different than the demo. And, and you got to kind of look past, look past that because it's, it's, it's almost just how it's meant to be. And, yeah. uh, you know, you get these uber talented musicians in there and you just, you almost have to just let them do their thing. Cause they, they, uh, they just, they know best, man. I mean, they do it all the time and, and they're there for a reason, but yeah, there, there is a, there are some songs that turn out a lot like the demo and, and, and stuff like that, but they're all there. There are also a, a bunch of songs that turn out completely different. That's just part of the part of the magic, like you said. I'm sure. Just you yeah, just never know where it's going to end up. No, well, and that's part of the fun of it, man. You know, if, if they're all going to turn out like the demo, we might as well just release the demo. But yeah. uh, but having those musicians in there, and there's no there's no telling what they're going to do that day. There's no telling what's what what kind of just monstrous lick or something is going to come out of come out of their minds and and onto the fretboard. That's awesome, man. At the beginning, we were talking about. You know the, the shows you have with Parker and Cole and the festivals and stuff. What do you have anything lined up for the fall yet? Yeah, man, we got some stuff lined up for the fall. We've been going out with Lee Bryce some, uh, and just because I've, I've got the same manager as him, just like I do do with Parker. And uh, we've got a bunch. Of, we've got some fairs. We got some honky tonks down in Florida and stuff like that. But uh, I mean, it's damn near every weekend that, that we've got we've got shows, either one, two, and. We're going out with my future brother-in-law in July, I think, for a five-show run. Uh, and I can't remember which week it is, but it's going to be a good time. We're going to go all the way from New Jersey to Ohio and then all the way down to South Carolina. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a good time. But, yeah, man, we've, we've got some stuff some stuff planned, but it's still trickling in. That's cool, man. What's, what's it like to get out there on the road with Travis? Oh man, it's fun. You know, I mean, look, Travis is my best friend, and I and I'm I'm blessed. I'm blessed in that way because, well, I'm mean, because he's marrying my sister. But yeah. it, uh, no, <laughs> he's sure. he's just a great dude. And I'll tell you what, the guy can slay a guitar too. But uh, he puts on a great show, brings out a great crowd, and uh, we always love going out with him. That's awesome, man. That's yeah. cool, man. I think I think you guys are trying to take over Nashville. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Your family. This is wild, man. Oh man. Well, hey, we're, you know, it's just, it's so, it's so weird that lightning struck twice or I guess three times with, you know, 
Eddie, Troy, and, and Dad, and we're just, like, God willing, hopefully it'll strike strike two more times with, with Travis Travis and me. I think it already has struck with Travis, but, uh, awesome. but hopefully I'm next on the totem pole. For sure, man. I definitely think it's bound to happen eventually, so keep on grinding, man. We're rooting for you for sure. Hey, Walker, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you on social media and where they can find all your music, man? Man, you can look up, just look up Walker Montgomery uh, on Instagram, you know, Twitter. If you want to see some some uh, football tweets, if I got a good buzz, I'll go on Twitter and start <laughs> tweeting about football. And uh, But, yeah, man, just look up Walker Montgomery. It's the one with the blue check mark. I can't stress that enough. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, man, and if you go to walkermontgomery.com, you can find – everything there perfect that's awesome that's cool man cool well walker thanks so much man for taking the time to chat with us tonight we truly appreciate that hey dude i, pre- I appreciate y'all having me on hit me up tomorrow we'll drink a beer in west virginia oh i will trust me man hell yeah <laughs> all right Sounds guys good, boys well hey i appreciate all the support absolutely man and to our listeners thank you guys so much for tuning in make sure y'all go check out walker's music you can find it on all major streaming platforms itunes all that good stuff and until next time keep it country and take care of each other